Welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. You know, when you're designing a project, whether you're using the easel software or VCarve, it doesn't really matter. And you want to be able to import in a picture or a clip art, and you just can't get it to work. And it just won't carve. How are you going to solve that problem? Well, one of the simplest and easiest ways is to draw your own. And what you can do is start out with a basic drawing and you can trace most of it. So I know there's not a lot of artists out there. Now I'm pretty sure that everybody can do some tracing. All you need is a black marker and a white piece of paper. So let's get started. Now, before you go crazy and say, I'm not talented and I can't do it, the first thing you could do is print out that drawing and be able to trace most of it. And that's what I did with this. Most of this was traced. And then from there, I was able to draw in just a few lines to be able to create the artwork that I wanted. The other thing that I was able to do, some of the lines in this area on the clip art were so thin that it just wouldn't carve. So by being able to trace my own figure, I was able to make those lines thicker so that they would carve and show up and give the effect that I wanted to be able to show. So that is what I want to be able to show you today on how to be able to do that. It's not that hard. Now there's nothing really fancy about this. I'm not even taping this drawing down, but I have the original drawing that I had sketched out earlier that quite frankly, I didn't really like. So I'm just gonna trace that image and then make my changes. And all I'm doing is just putting a piece of paper on top of the original drawing and I'm gonna start drawing. If it moves a little bit, not really a big deal. So keep that in mind. This does not have to be 100% totally accurate with the one below that you're tracing. The biggest problem that I've had over the years is when I find a piece of clip art and I take it into Inkscape, oftentimes the lines may be so, so thin that they just will not carve. Well, using this method, you can actually print out the clip art and then eliminate some of the lines that you don't need, but then for the important ones, go ahead and make those lines wider so that they will carve and be seen on your project much, much easier. Right here was a good example. This line was so thin in the original artwork that it just didn't carve to the point where you could see it. Well, this way I can actually take my black bold line and make it wider and that way it'll show up and it's very important the actual outline of your drawing shows up very clearly. The other consideration on a black and white drawing you need to be able to determine where the dark black areas are going to be versus the white areas. So take a look at that carefully because that will make a big difference when you're being able to carve this. Remember the black area is going to carve down deeper than the light areas. Your black areas also create the shadows and the contour and the outline. Now when it comes time to put in the new feature, in this case a pencil, I'm going to grab a pencil and use that to sketch in exactly what I want. This way if I don't like it, all I need to do is erase it and continue on. And I'll sketch out exactly what I want before I use the black marker and darken it in. And if I make a line that I don't like, it's not a big deal. I can just either erase it or draw over it and continue on knowing where the correct place will be. That way when I take the black marker, I can start darkening it in and I can have exactly what I want the first time. And please remember, this does not have to be perfect. Part of a cartoon is the imperfections that you do have in it. And remember, you're usually going to be carving this into either wood or PVC, some type of a material that's going to have a few imperfections anyway. And what better way to be able to show a little bit of character 
than not have it 100% perfect. So relax and enjoy and have fun with it. After you get your drawing done, all you need to be able to do is take a picture of it. Make sure you have good lighting, no shadows on the uh, drawing, and then just focus in and take a couple of pictures. You want to take a couple of them so you can pick and choose which is the best one. Now that the file is saved, it's time to open it. Now I'm in Inkscape, so I just go up to File, and I want to select Import, and then I can highlight the file that I brought into the computer and bring it into Inkscape. Now this is the image that I just brought in without doing any modifications to it. So what I want to do is come up to Path, click Trace Bitmap. I'm going to come over and reduce the number of colors. I don't need to have eight colors, it's black and white. So I'm going to reduce that down to two and update it. So there's the image. I'm going to click OK. The nice thing about this now, the image trace is on top. So this is my image. This part I no longer need. So I'm going to delete that. First thing I want to do is go ahead and take this object and let's rotate it to 90 degrees. So I'm going to come up to Object scroll down and there is the rotate button and now I have my image rotated the way that I need it. Now the other thing that I want to be able to show you is you can always go back if you don't like what you see you can go back and add more to this and trace more until you get the image looking the way that you want to. Now this actually looks pretty clean. I don't need to do anything else to it so I'm going to go ahead and save this and bring this into my file. I typed in GNOME 1 because I was playing with some other designs earlier and I actually like this one better. Now as far as the type, I'm going to go ahead and do the optimized SVG. Hit save. It's going to bring up this window. I just click OK. And now that image is saved. Next I'm going to go ahead and open up VCarve and bring this image into that drawing. Now just go over to opening an existing file and I have my gnome garden sign here so I'm going to go ahead and open that. Now this is the first gnome that I did. I really don't like him so I'm going to go ahead and delete this little guy out and bring in my new one. Now I have not grouped him together yet, so he's still in a lot of pieces. So I'm just going to go from the bottom and drag up, and I'm going to catch most of him this way and be able to delete it. Then I'll catch my last pieces and delete that. Now I'm ready to bring in my new clip art. So I'm going to go right up here to this one right there, and there is my little gnome one. I'm going to open that, and again, you don't see this immediately pop in, but let's scroll out, and let's see where he is. There he is. So now, I'm going to go ahead and shrink him down to begin with, because he's way too big. And I'm going to take the center and drag him over. Let's reduce him still further. Now let's zoom in. So there is my new gnome in the project and I think he's going to look pretty good. So now let's go ahead without doing anything else to him and I want to create some tool paths. Now I'm going to highlight the whole entire project and just to make sure I'm going to go from my bottom right and I'm going to go up to be able to capture everything 
and I want to double check and make sure it looks like all of my pieces are highlighted except for this outer border and I'm going to use the V-Carve toolpath. I want to be able to have this on the surface and I also don't want it to go too deep. So what I want to be able to do is make sure it does not go any deeper than a point one. I am going to use the V-Carve uh, 90 degree bit and then down here I'm just going to leave that as V-Carve 2 right now. I'm going to go ahead and calculate it. Now that it's telling me that I have so to go to the vector validator. So let's go over here. We'll search the selected ones. And we have some problems. So we're going to tell it to go ahead and correct it. Now it's all corrected. And now I can go ahead and calculate this. So there are the tool paths now to be able to get this done. So let's preview this. Now if you look at the artwork, I think my little gnome looks pretty darn good. The letters are a standard text, so I like that. I think that will carve very nicely. Much, much better than the original drawing. I'm going to go ahead now and put that back at the 2D. We'll click anywhere. Now I'm gonna highlight the outer vector. We're gonna go back over here with this highlighted. I'm now, we're gonna to need to close this, and I'm going to do the profile. I'm gonna use this where it starts at the zero. I'm gonna cut all the way through. Now this is actually a thicker piece. I'm gonna put this at 0.76. I am using an end mill eighth inch. We are going to cut on the outside. And I am going to go ahead and calculate that. It will cut all the way through. Yes, that's what I want it to do. Notice on this warning, even though I changed to the 0.76 that it recorded, it still left the original at the 0.5. So this is something I'm going to go back to the 2D drawing portion and make that correction in the initial setup. Went ahead and reset the preview and I want to show you what it's going to look like. So I'm going to preview all tool paths. Now you see that it's cutting out the profile first. And really you don't want to do that, but it's two separate bits, two separate files. So in this case, it's not a big deal. Now this is the V-carved tool path that it's going to go through. Now I didn't show actually inputting the letters. This is a standard font and it's just a matter of selecting the text and putting it into position. And there you have it. If you want to get rid of the outside material, just double click on that and it will disappear. Now if you want to be able to make sure that you're cutting the V-carve first, all you need to be able to do is click this button right there and that will rotate and switch those. So now it would carve the V-carve first and then the profile. So there is the sign completed. Looks much better than the original one. Doing your own artwork by tracing it is not hard and it's actually a lot of fun. Now if you'd like to see me carve this project, go ahead and leave me a comment down in the uh, comment section below. And if there's a lot of response, I'll go ahead and carve this sign. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.